Aston Martin are slowly losing out on their momentum from the start of the season, as it's been a few races now where Lance Stroll is struggling to finish in good positions, costing the team valuable points for that desired second place in the Constructors' Championship. This led to many discussing his seat at Aston Martin, and more so if he really is the right guy for Fernando Alonso, who proves to be an amazing addition to the green team. Fernando is defending Lance and basically loves him, but for the sake of the team, should they look elsewhere? In this video, we look at Aston Martin's duo of drivers and if the future of Stroll is in jeopardy. Stick around and let's get into it. The Canadian Grand Prix was another one in the list of growing problems for Lance Stroll, having barely gotten into points tally, finishing P9 versus Alonso's P2. This is now a serious problem for Aston Martin, with only one of their drivers being consistently in top 5 and the other one rotating up and down and even getting DNFs twice so far in this season. This has led to Aston Martin themselves really struggling in the Constructors' Championship, and especially with Mercedes now bringing big upgrades and scoring good results in the past few races, the green car spot in number 2 is now slowly slipping away from them. Thus, it begs the question, is Lance Stroll the real deal or is he only here because of his father? Alonso has been the star driver for Aston Martin, consistently reaching the podium and putting immense pressure on his team partner. The difference in points between the two drivers is significant this year. However, Stroll finally managed to outdo Alonso in the recent Spanish Grand Prix, partly due to the damage in Alonso's car. Even then, it appeared that Alonso could have surpassed Stroll had he chosen to do so. So far, Alonso has secured more podium finishes than anyone except Max Verstappen, while Stroll's highest placement was fourth in Australia. Despite all the negative attention, Alonso has defended Stroll, arguing that many quick conclusions are being made about Stroll's performance without considering his bad luck, and then he further praised Stroll's performance under challenging conditions and downplayed some of his failures to unfortunate circumstances or team strategy, and he believes that Stroll just needs more favourable opportunities to shine. There have been persistent questions about Stroll's commitment to Formula 1, often suggesting that his father's interest, who owns Aston Martin, might be the driving force behind his career. Alonso dismissed these speculations, asserting that Stroll is motivated and deserving of his place in the sport. But even if, according to Alonso, he is deserving of his place, his performance certainly doesn't show that. Stroll's performance is currently posing a challenge to Aston Martin's position in the Constructors' Championship. While Mercedes boasting two top drivers is close on the leaderboard, Aston Martin is feeling the stress. Stroll is up against an exceptional competitor in Alonso, who has outperformed him in all eight qualifying sessions this season, with an average base advantage of 0.3%. Even if Stroll is a competent driver, his performance hasn't lived up to his own early season standards. His initial results, which earned steady points, might have been acceptable for a team like Aston Martin, but his performance in the last two races certainly was not. Stroll needs to step up, especially as mid-tier teams become more competitive, and his losing streak to drivers from teams like Alpine, AlphaTauri and McLaren is a significant issue. Stroll needs to improve soon, and although his position in the team isn't immediately at risk, he needs to consistently prove his worth in the short term to medium term, especially if he continues to perform poorly in races like the last two. The discussion about Stroll's long-term place in Aston Martin based on his recent form is premature. However, if he fails to catch up to Alonso, a serious evaluation of his performance will be warranted in due time. With the addition of a partner like Honda, increased investment, the establishment of a new factory and the initiation of the latest wind tunnel and simulator technologies, Aston Martin is expected to have high aspirations. The team will have no justifiable reasons for being limited by driver performance, yet this could be a potential issue and there's immediate worry that it might be a problem as early as this year. The progress Aston Martin has made this season, coupled with the unforeseen chance to contend for the second spot in championship, necessitates that Stroll improves his performance. Not at all surprising, his father Lawrence is full of optimism for his son, going as far as saying that his son will equal Fernando Alonso's tally at the end of the season, which would be shocking to say the least. Lawrence really loves his son and believes in him and honestly, who can blame him? For me, I don't really see Lawrence letting Lance down as easy as it looks to us, given how much he adores his son. I think he could instead put Lance in a more of a managerial role to ease the blow. Nevertheless, Stroll receives a lot of support from everyone on the team and he has a lot of credit left. 
Whether that's because of the position his father is in, or because people really do believe in him achieving good results, who knows. In all honesty, Lance isn't doing too badly, and at his age, and having been in for a few years now, he can use his developing experience to get a lot better while having the benefit of Fernando carrying the team expectations. However, Alonso isn't going to be around forever, so if the team is on an upward trajectory to potentially compete and win a title in a few years, they don't have a good number two right now to slot into that role that Alonso will leave. Even if they do get another top driver to replace Alonso, without consistent points and podiums from the number two driver, the team is being held back. I can see Mercedes beating them this year if Lance doesn't perform as good as the car can. Stroll is not a bad driver, but simply he isn't good enough for a top team, even as a second driver as we already saw that in 2020 when Lance was given the so-called pink Mercedes, which was the third best car and sometimes even better than Red Bull on the grid. And while his then teammate Perez ended in P4 in the championship, Lance ended 11th. Lance is in his 7th season now, and so far he's been beaten by his teammate in every season except Sorotkin. Worst drivers and drivers like him are already gone from F1 because normally they don't last that long. And then we have the Lawrence Stroll situation because Lawrence isn't a sole owner of Aston Martin. If his son keeps underperforming, the pressure will be on him to do something about it. You do wonder just what's going to happen and how much pressure Lawrence's love for his son and desire to dote on him will withstand. I think it's fairly doubtless that a driver with such a weak head-to-head -head against teammates would be under significant scrutiny by now, and the endless statements about Lance being one for the future look more and more like the empty platitudes they are. Lawrence Stroll's drive to succeed is undoubtful, and given the steps they've made this year, his ability to drive a team towards success. The great unknown is what will happen when this crosses paths with his desire to indulge Lance, and what decision will ultimately be made in the face of the growing public perception of an increasingly untenable position for his son. So here we come to a very ironic situation. In his quest to make Lance a world champion, Lawrence Stroll is investing very heavily in the team, the car, the other driver and the facilities, and now also the works engine partnership. But the main outcome is that Lance Stroll is being exposed and humiliated, and he definitely doesn't deserve that. There is maybe another interesting thing here. Finishing higher in the Constructors' Championship is a handicap due to the reduced wind tunnel time. Strategically, if Aston Martin really does aim for the title fight within the next few years, they would benefit from finishing fourth. Therefore, Stroll is doing exactly what they need him to do, dropping points and allowing them to lose out in the Constructors' Championship to gain an advantage over their competitors. Whatever this situation may turn out to be, Stroll is a driver that needs to improve if he needs to be a member of a team that strives for the top and this season, Aston Martin certainly does. Your father being one of the shareholders does give you a bunch of credits, but nothing is eternal. Only time will tell if Stroll's position is in jeopardy, or will he be sent in a mid-tier team like Williams or Alfa Tori? Let us know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. What do you think about Stroll's future and current place? Thank you for watching, and we'll see you at the next one.